In this video, we're going to talk about k nearest neighbors and how to implement k nearest neighbors in Google Colab. For doing this, we have a small data set which is coming in from uci.edu and this is the citation. So on this data set, based on the left weight, left distance and right weight and right distance, we are able to predict if it's going to be a left or balanced or right class. So left, balanced or right class based on left weight, left distance, right weight and right distance. And using this, I'm going to explain you what is k-nearest neighbor. And in the next video, we're going to implement k-nearest neighbor in Google Colab using Python. So let's look at the data set. Now, this data set has class, which is shown here. And then you have left weight, left distance, right weight, and right distance. Then what I have done is added two columns, which is going to be product of left, left weight, left distance as left product, and right weight, right distance as right product. Again, left weight, left distance is left prod, and right weight, right distance is R prod, which is right product. And I plotted left product and right product on a graph like as shown, you would see the blue colors are balanced while the, the right balance are in red color, as a uh, green color, which is shown here, and then orange color for left, which is shown there. Now let's take an example wherein we want to predict that given a dot or given a position of a value, what class it belongs. And this is the classification. K nearest neighbor is a classification problem and you see this black dot which is here and we want to predict which class it belongs to. Is it blue, balanced, orange, left or green, right? All right. So in order to do that, we are going to create distances from this point to the nearest neighbors and that is why the term nearest neighbors. If you look at it, based on this point, you have one nearest as, as blue, another nearest as right, but most of the point, which is three out of five, are nearest, which is the left balance. And that is why we can say with a confidence level, saying that this dot is going to be belonging to the the right uh, the the left which is the orange so that's why i colored this as an orange and this is based on the distances what you got these distances are known as euclidean distances euclidean e u c l e d a d e a n so euclidean distances and based on these distances the closest of an odd number. So we take number five, that means we're looking at five closest points. We can take seven. So we'll take seven nearest dots from this location, which will form the, the closest neighbors. And then we calculate the number of points which are closer as compared to uh, you know, other points. And the highest number of points will define the class. And that is how we define the k nearest neighbor problem. With that, let us look at our data set and let's start using Google Colab. Very, very simple. Buy now Google Colab in detail. So now you have KNN DIY3. Feel free to look at this file. The Google Drive link is mentioned in the description section of the video. And then I will run this. This is to import libraries. Let me say, we used this in the previous video. We used pandas. We used matplotlib. In this, for KNN, we will use sklearn.neighbors import k neighbors classifiers and then import numpy as np. So this is the, these are the libraries we are going to import. Again, this is a simple print. 
I'm going to keep as it is. And then please note that in the previous set of videos, we mounted a Google Drive link. And the same thing we are going to do, we are going to mount a G Drive link, which is here already mounted. So we don't have to do that. But if the session expires, you have to do that. Now I'm going to read a file, classification use. Let's take a look at this file in just a moment. So this is a file which is XLS. Please note that last time we used was a CSV file. So we, we just, I just showed you how to use an Excel file now. Now in this file, what we have is based on area and its price, you want to predict if this property will be sold or not. So one is sold, zero not sold. If you take a look over here, for area 300, if the range of values or the price is less than 100K, it's going to be sold. Anything over 100K is not sold. Let's look at others. 400 ranges, if it is 118 max, it's going to be sold. But anything beyond that, it looks like it won't be sold. So sold is a flag, it's a class. Remember our class which we had in the example, right balance, left balance and balanced. This is just two classes, sold or not sold. Let's plot it. This tool for data analytics is Excel, right? So I plotted area and price in an Excel spreadsheet and I saw that this is the plot of the area here. I plotted this price to area, area to price, I'm sorry. So I plotted this area to price and this is how the plot looks like. Now what we want to do is find a curve which is the boundary line saying that on one side it is sold yes and on the other side is sold no. So yes is one, no is zero. Let's do that. So in the last video, we saw a model flowchart, recap of the model flowchart. So you have start, get data, we got the data, then split the data, and then 80-20 split, train and test a data set. If it has target, that means you have a value to predict. If it is no, then unsupervised. If yes, then supervised. So after supervised, you would say continuous, that means many type of values, it's an integer value or discrete means classes, yes. So we are following this yes now because we have a two only two classes, one or zero, one means yes, zero means no. So regression, which is the regression problem we are trying to solve here, KNN, and then we are gonna train the model. And once the model is trained, and this is what we did only till linear regression, we are going to test the model as well. We did that also in linear regression, but we did not evaluate the model. So for evaluation purposes, we are going to use confusion matrix. And then we are going to decide, we are going to say end. So I will talk to you in this video, what is confusion matrix? And then we are going to go back to the linear regression and we will talk about RMSE, which is root mean square error. So let's talk about confusion matrix sometime during this uh, video All right so let's move on I promise that i'll follow the same flow chart going down this step what it, what we are doing is the x we are defining as the data frame which is this one the value zero and one so this is zero which is area and one is the price and y we are defining as two as dot values. Please note that in the linear regression, we use it a little bit differently. In KNN, I'm using it using iLock, and these are two ways of doing this. So both ways are correct. If you want to follow the linear regression method of defining X and Y, that's fine as well. And then I'm going to execute this as well. I'm going to print X and Y. So X is area and price, and then y is 0, 1, 1, 0. and then as per the model flowchart let me split the data set 
So I'm going to split the data set. You can see train size is 0.8. I'm going to use train test split, which is I'll just scroll at the very up train test split, which I have called here. Scrolling very at the thing, yes. And I'm going to run this. So we have now four variables x train, x test, y train, y test. And this is what we're going to do. Please note that in the linear regression, we had one feature and one target. In this, we have two features one is area and another is price. Also, point to be noted that let me go back to so if point to be noted area range is around from 300 to let's say 1000 that's the range of area but if you look at price it starts from 80000 close to that and goes up to 400000 so if you look at the range the integer value range of area and price it's too large and this is not a good thing to have this data set as part of the model training. Why? Because there is a lot of difference between the range of the values and therefore it will take a lot of time for the model to kind of iterate one and second is because the price has a larger value, the price value will dominate the machine learning process and that is the reason why we will limit or we will rescale we will fe do feature scaling wherein we are going to put this range of area between minus 1 to 1 we are going to scale it and we are going to also put the value of price also taking the range from minus 1 to 1 so at the end of the day for area the minimum value will be negative one and the maximum value will be positive one and same for the price so that the one of the feature do not override the other feature both features have the same set of values so in order to not get confused let's take a look at the code so i'm going to do feature scaling here sk learn pre-processing standard scalar SC is this my standard scalar. So there is a property or there is a, a function. There is a library already available and scikit-learn.preprocessing, which is going to help do the scan. Please note that you would need to do this in cases where you have more than one feature. So if you have multiple features, you would like to scale the values. So let's look at the values of X train once it's scaled. Please note that the here is the value of x train now i can print x, x train over here just to show you what it looks like so if you look at it it's area and price which is you know their their natural numbers and then i'm going to run this one and you can see that the value is between negative one to positive one over here of course you will see 1.52 as well but it is comparative it, the values are not that high the difference is here is almost 190,000 difference between the value of price and area here it's very small that is what we call it as standard scaling so what we did by till now is we got the data set i'll just quickly go through it i got the data set from here and then i put it in a data frame defined x and y and then we split between train and test and then we added one more step which is feature scaling after this in the next video we're going to do the knn model learning and we will talk about it about the confusion matrix also thank you for watching